Morning, Damp Sam here, aka Simon from All Dry Damp Proofing. I've just uh, started this uh, latest jam, damp proofing job that we've got uh, in Barnsley, we can buy in Barnsley. Now I just wanted to show you the difference between rising damp and low level um, damp that's, uh, that's occurring for different reasons. I'm just going to point out what reasons they are. What we've got here is a property where a timber suspended floor, a uh, suspended timber floor. If you look down here, we've just took skirtings off, which are quite large, and I'd said to in the report that there's probably a gap between the skirtings. You can see here this gap. We've got it on that side, and we've got even bigger ones on this side. Now smack here, where this is here, that's an air brick. So what's going off here is you've got cold air coming in into the subfloor, and you've got a gap here, so you've got your cold air coming up and it's coming up back of the skirting and it makes all this area cold. So you've got a timber floor and you've got holes in the floor as well. So you will get that air running around inside of the subfloor, but also it's coming up through the through these these gaps in, in floor in flooring. One of the things that we do when we when we reinstate plaster is I'll form them gaps up. So I either use well what we use is an expanding foam, polyurethane foam, and then cut it off after and that stops any air coming up and creating a cold spot, which is which is one of the problems what's happened here. Where you've got your chimney breast, this is a different issue. This is because you've got originally this had been a, a huge open fire and they've been burning fossil fuels on it and what's happening now is they've, they've boarded it there's no damp rub membrane in bottom of in bottom of that hat that where half is and they've, they've filled it in with bricks and rubble and mortar and the damp will just be rising up because there's no membrane in that will go all the way down to an earth uh, bed and then infill, so you, you get like a, you get lateral damp coming through, which is coming this way rather than upwards, or it comes upwards and then it comes this way. So what it needs to, to, to have on there is um, a waterproof system. So when you do a chimney breast, always put a waterproof system on a plaster um, that's got a good salt neutralizing plaster at the top. So you're better off just doing a waterproofing system. There's different ways of doing it. That's why we like to get on the job, hack it off have a look what's happening behind and decide what we're going to put on then uh, instead of specifying one type of plaster. We specify that it's got to be done in accordance with BS6576, I've got that right this time, um, and that just states that this has got to have a salt neutralising plaster on it. Now I'm just going to take you outside and show you what we're going off outside because it weren't just one issue. This. Um, and it's a bit like detective work, so when you come out, you, you've got to sort of look at all different things, all different angles, and try and find out, you know, why, why is it becoming damp inside when it's this type of floor, when it's that type of floor. So if you look up there, what you've got is you've got a, a solid render on outside, but then just about here, which I'll show you from above, this here is a slate ledge. Now what's happening is, is when it rains, water's dripping off that, and then it's dripping against this brickwork at bottom. And then at bottom, you've also got another ledge, and there, what's missing is a, a, a fillet. And they've got one round this side. There's a, there should be a fillet on it. So what we what we are doing is we're putting a product called Storm Dry on bottom half foot wall, and what that'll do is, when it rains, if water drips against this, it'll just bead up and run off. It'll not soak in, it'll not cause any further damage to this brickwork. Um, so I'll just take you around here. This is James. Say up, James. Yeah. There you go. Um, and that, it's just the same problem all the way around. You've got you know, a ledge at bottom. I don't know if you can see. Just down here, all the way on. I mean, it's covered over it now, but there's a green algae on bottom. And that owner signs that, that we saw that 
that says that rainwater splashing back against the building. Now they've, they've drilled and injected a damp proof course here some time ago. It's an old system because it's been drilled into brick. But what's happened is um, rainwater splashing back above it. So you can see where this algae is. And when rainwater splashes ab above the damp course, it means that damp course is either too low or um, or you've got issues <coughs> other than that. So what we're going to do is, because it's it's got a damp proof course in, it's also 1920s, 1930s built property, which has got a physical damp course in, which means it was built with, um, it will be something like a felt bitumen uh, roll damp course uh, as they were building it. So it was it were incorporated to the, at an early stage. But then also, for some reason, somebody's drilled and injected in, they've probably not known that there were a bridging issue going off. Um, down here, you've got another air brick. So the same again, I saw we had them gaps at the other side. They've got that cold cold spot being created. And you've got air coming up through, you know, through them gaps in skirting. And just round here, this is just last, last little point. We've got a bay window here. Now, they've got a big curved radiator in that window. And when I came to do uh, initial survey, the, that had all salts on it, it had a big white salt band on it. Same again, if you just look, there's a, a ledge, a, a, a slate. Now, when it rains, rainwater will, will drip off that, which it is a drip member, but also what will happen is if there's any wind, it'll blow it back against the building. And if you look, that wall's built solely of headers, which means it's a solid wall, so it'll just be built um, with header bricks. Because you know, they've got like sort of, it's, it's short, it's not a stretcher. So that means that with it being solid, you're going to get penetrating damp. So what we're going to do is rather than take that radiator off, because there's no um, issues inside, all we're going to do is, do, is sort of treat it from outside, stop water penetrating from this point. So. What we're trying to, what, what, I'm, what I'm getting across is, uh, when you come to do a, a survey, when you have a, a damp company out to do a survey, if they're not qualified, if they're not, if they've not been and took exams and been shown the correct procedures, um, what's going to happen is they'll come and just, they'll just say it's going to be, it needs to be one way, hack off, drill and inject it. When sometimes it doesn't need to be drilled and injected, a lot of time it doesn't need to be injected. All it needs is someone to look at it who's qualified, who knows what they're on, on about and and say, yeah, it, this wants this type of damp proofing, this wants this remedial work, this wants that remedial work. If you get somebody like that, honest, like me, like all dry damp proofing, then you can't go far wrong. And that's normally a company that's registered with the PCA, that's members of PCA we all signed up to a code of conduct um, so have a look at his other videos which are going to be about here sign up for and subscribe which is going to be about here and if you want to look on our website it's probably going to be about here so that's Simon from All Dry Damp Proofing get in touch giving you a lot of value um, whatever you want to know about Send it in and I'll, uh, I'll try and answer your questions. Have a good morning. Afternoon, just a quick update here. Um, job that we were doing earlier on. It's three o'clock, we've put all packing on and I'll just take you around and show you what we've got. So, this wall, we've put render light on it. Um, it was just the easiest way to do it is with thickness. It weren't quite thick enough to get a board on. Um, so we put render light on it. That's going to be fine all the way down to lower, timber floor. This we put a drywall, fast drywall system on. Board stuck on with an acrylic, salt neutralizer on back, like we've explained in other videos. Took about 10 minutes to stick on, that was about it, fresh board, 
Whack that on. Chimney breast, natsem. Natsem, that took about three quarters of an hour to bang on. One three inch stool. And that, if I wanted, that's solid. Put that on about an hour ago. If I wanted, I could skim that now. Um, skim that, and I could skim that. This is render light, you can't. It's gonna take 24 hours before you can touch it. So we've got render light on this side as well. Just for thickness of plaster and um, round sockets and stuff like that, but we've got that on there. So, tomorrow, with PVA top ready, tomorrow we'll come in in the morning, knock a bucket of skimming up, whack them on, blend it in, and that'll be, that'll be done and dusted. Guaranteed, let's get this back on, job done in two days. All right, that's a quick update from Sam. Stamp Sam, bye bye.